Hello Internet! In this video we're going to be making what I'm calling our emissive smoke shader. Uh, what this is going to be is, well, I already have smoke, but imagine if we could put lights inside of our smoke. The light would hit parts of the smoke. That's what we're going to try to simulate, I guess. Uh, so we kind of have a particle system here. I want to create a shader where I can set a world space position for the light. Uh, we're just going to manually do this. In the future, it'd be cool if we could actually use the point lights in your scene. I don't know exactly how easy that's going to be, so we're just going to use our own value and just move it around manually for now. But generally, the idea is you put a light somewhere, cast a sphere out, and then it just kind of affects all the particles in that particular spot. And so it looks sort of volumetric, uh, but uh, at least I'm hoping hoping that's what's going to happen. I haven't tried this before, so we're going to see. Uh, but this is where we are right now, just a really basic particle thing. We've got a whole bunch of random effects. It's rotating and there's color over time and all the other cool stuff. But really, it's just a particle system. So I have this new standard shader that I just created. There's nothing new here. If you do a if you create a new standard shader from Unity, this is what you're going to get. So we're going to create an emissive smoke shader. Uh, we're going to need our main texture, which is obviously going to be our. Oh, whoa, that's the wrong hotkey. Uh, apologies if my keyboard does weird things. It's broken and I have a new one sitting over that way, uh, but I don't have the, the, the risers. Uh, and I have a mechanical keyboard, so if I don't have those, all you guys would hear is clicking. So I'm using this one for now. It will be switched out shortly. It's part of the reason why there were no videos lately. But anyway, getting distracted. We have glossiness and metallic. I can take those out. So our particles can be colored and they'll have a texture. And then we're also going to need a emission color. We'll just call this the, the emission color. Why not? Uh, sure. And that will be a color. We'll default it to say red. And that should be good. So there's our emission color. The other thing we are going to need is going to be an emission location, which is going to be a vector at a specific point. And so this is going to be the world space coordinate that we're going to emit our light from. And so if we do that, give it a vector and just initialize that to zeros. I think that should work. It's been a while since I've used vectors in a shader like that, but we'll do that. We need to change this render type uh, to transparent and the Q. I always forget this. I have some notes pulled up from somebody who did something similar. Uh, so they just have a transparent shader because I, I forget some of the transparent stuff. So we need a queue here. Uh, this actually render type, I think, I think we can just get rid of that for now. I don't think that's required for what we're doing. The other thing we need is this is going to be a alpha blended shader. It's not going to, so if, when you normally do particles, the default particle is uh, an additive shader which means all of the color from your particles is added to the scene behind it. We don't really want that. What we do want is we want to take some blended color and blend it onto our scene behind it. So we want it based on the alpha, we want to take a certain amount of our current image and a certain amount of the stuff behind it. Uh, so classic transparent shader. To do that, we need to do a blend. And so this is going to take how much, uh, the way these blend states work, is there's two uh, uh, things that you're going to affect the blending on. The first one is going to be the source from this shader. So I'm saying we're going to use the source alpha, which is our alpha, as how much of this shader we're going to use in the scene. The other one is going to be one minus the source alpha, which is going to be how much of the current rendered scene we're going to use, which means we're taking as much alpha, so if say this is a fully opaque uh, fragment or pixel or whatever you want to call it, uh, if we have a fully opaque version, this is going to be one and this will be zero because we're taking entirely our shader. But if it's like 0.5, 
we'd want half of what we just rendered with this shader and half of what was already there. So that's sort of how those works. You can do a bunch of things. This is how uh, additive shaders are done as well. You just add instead of subtracting like we're doing here. But that's the general additive shader stuff. Uh, other than that, this should be good. I'm going to pass in a color. Uh, so we want the vertex color. That's how the particle system works. That's how everything gets alpha blended and fades in and fades out and can be changed with color. So we are going to have a, a vert color. I don't know if this is a great name for it. And then to get the actual vertex color, the name doesn't matter, but you do need to tag it with this type and say it's a color. That will tell Unity to pull the vertex color and stick it in this variable. And then we're going to use the other magic one, which is our world pose, which is going to take the world position of the fragment. Uh, so that's our three inputs. We should have a UV position for our texture. We'll have the vertex color, which we can use then in our particle system to kind of animate the color. And we'll have the world position, which we're going to be using along with our emission location to actually calculate if it's within the, the range, which speaking of, I forgot one, uh, emission range. And so this can just be a float and we'll set that equal to like 10 initially. That might be big, but we'll, we can tweak it. That's the point of it being a parameter. So now that we have those, I can get rid of both of our metallic and our glossy. We're not using those anymore. We've got our main texture, our color. So both of those are accounted for, but we need to add three new variables for the three properties we just added. And they need to, their names need to match. So emission color, uh, I'm just going to write these quick. Since we're using uh, colors, that needs to be a float for, and this needs to be a float for, for our emission location. Vectors are vector fours in shaders. You get an X, Y, Z, and a W vector parameter. You can just ignore the W if you're doing uh, things. You can just use the swizzle operator, which is just a really quick way to reduce things. But by default, you get vector fours. And in the Unity shader or editor, you're going to get a four vector or four parameters. Anyway, that should be all of those. We have everything else rendering. Uh, we're also going to just stick in our color. So we're going to grab our vert color here. And so this should, <laughs> should is a very big thing here but it should give us a very similar effect at this point. We're not using any of these emission arguments at this point, but this should give us a very close uh, simulation that's very close to what we already have. So I should be able to take this shader and apply it to this material we're using, and we should just get back to where we are. We shouldn't see too big of a difference. If we are, I've broken something. We are gonna lose our, our soft part particles, blah. <laughs> but we don't really need those. I, I don't know. They help with smoke, but that should be fine. I totally broke it because I took out the glossiness. We'll set those equal to uh, zero. I suppose I could have left those in. Somebody's probably going to want to change those. Anyway, <laughs> there we go. Invalid initialization. Oh, ha. Huh. Is it? What? That needs to be a float four. The color needs to be a float four. There's an alpha channel there that I was totally missing, and that would have broken our math. So now we should get this. And let's uh, attach that. Ooh. That's not right at all. <laughs> So the general idea was we were going to get the same thing, but we didn't. Our alpha isn't correctly rendering at all. Well, that's neat. Uh, ignore, like, so those, there's black lines and stuff around there. All of that is just because that's supposed to be transparent. Uh, so 
whatever graphics editor just had had to store data there. So it either stored white or black or something in between. It you may find something, uh, but usually in the alpha channel it's just garbage data. So I did something wrong, very wrong. I'm gonna get these colors back to what they were in the old shader, just so it's a little bit dimmer. There we go. And this still works, but something's up with our blending. Hmm. What did I miss? I missed something very obvious. Let me let me check this quick. Like is it this is it is it this simple? I this is just a total guess. This wasn't there. But yes. Okay. We're getting to a correct ish point. I have still screwed it up because we aren't using the correct uh shading. Getting rid of that won't fix it. Hmm. So there, there's two, the, the problem is there's two versions of opaque. Uh, there's opaque, it doesn't do anything. Uh, and then there's opaque, uh, or not opaque, opaque is the wrong word. There's fully transparent where it's like not there, but then there's fully transparent like glass where you can still get uh, spectral lighting and things like, or yeah lighting like that. We're getting that second one and we want the first. I'm going to need to go and check out how to change the lighting because I, I think that's the problem here. I think we need to swap out the standard, but I'm not entirely sure. So I'm going to, I'm going to go check that quick. Okay. So we got it. Uh, I was missing one thing when I did the alpha, I was so close, but not quite correct. We needed alpha and we needed to be a fade. Otherwise it was just going to use the transparent bit. So that actually scales the lighting as well as everything else. Otherwise the lighting still is at 100%. You'll still get lighting effects even on a transparent surface. So today I learned <laughs> now we need to make all of this fun stuff work. We already have a color. That's our smoke. That is what we're going to be modifying. And I think the best way to do this is to actually add on by the textures alpha channel, if that makes any sense. So effectively, we're uh, think of the alpha channel as sort of the density of that thing. And so what we want to do is effectively say the color is actually equal to the color plus some new value. And that value is going to be equal to the emission color times the uh, color dot alpha, the alpha of the color, the density of that, times the distance from emission. And that should be it. So what we need to do is we need to solve for this distance from emission. And this entire thing needs to be multiplied by our Oh, we already had emission color in there. I don't need to do that again. <laughs> so the distance from emission, we want this to be a scale from one to zero. And we don't want it to go below zero. If it goes below zero, we'll start subtracting colors from our thing, which would actually look kind of interesting. I might leave that and we'll, we'll see what happens. I imagine it will just make everything black outside of that. If we well, actually we'd use red. So I just take away the red channel. So it'd make everything green. We'll, we'll find out because I'm going to I'm going to do that. <laughs> so float distance from emission. We want this to be one if it's directly at the same point and then fall off. So it's it becomes zero at the emission range. So just a linear scale that becomes zero at that emission range. And that can be done by subtracting the two vectors. We want to do a I don't know if that's the function for it. There's a function for calculating distance. Otherwise we can write our own. They're not too difficult, uh, but we want to take the input dot world pose and the, uh, I want to do the X, Y, and Z position of that and the input, not the input, <laughs> the emission location dot X, Y, Z. 
this is uh, the XYZ is sort of a sw it's called a swizzle operator and I don't know where it gets that name but what it does is it there's four or there's five four values on this thing we can do X Y Z and W those are the that's a vector four. but if we want say X Y Z we can just type that and it will it will create a three-dimensional vector with X Y and Z in those positions if I want a two-dimensional thing I can do just X Y if I want just X we can do that. If I want, say, Z first, I can do Z, X, Y, and I'll get a three-dimensional vector with Z first. Uh, and you can mix and match those however you want. Uh, you can also do like RGB and things like that. Uh, I believe you should, you should be able to. Uh, it's <laughs> been a while, but pretty sure you can do RGB. Anyway, doesn't really matter for this. We're just using it to get this from a four-dimensional to a three-dimensional vector. But there's our distance. And so that's going to be zero to our, uh, and just increase from there. That's the opposite of what we want. So we're going to take that and divide that by the emission range, which can come second. <laughs> but then our effective formula is going to be the emission range minus this distance. So since this starts at zero, we're going to have a value of emission range when in the two points overlap. And then as that distance increases, as that function increases in value, the actual result is going to uh, reduce. And so when this distance becomes equal to the emission range, it becomes zero. And then we can get it to equal uh, or to be in that range between one and zero by just dividing it by the emission range. So instead of being in between the emission range and zero, it's now between one and zero. And that sort of solves that. We should have now a linear fall off. And that should be good actually, assuming this formula was correct. We should now have a thing, I need my semicolon, but after we get that, we should have something that we can emit. Well, it's doing something. <laughs> um, Oh, I broke it. Undefined variable distance in in. Oh, well, I had an underscore in the in, so that's totally wrong. Distance isn't defined. Let's do length. This is kind of a guessing game for me because I don't actually know the name of the function. It may just take one vector. I may need to subtract them. There we go. Cool. So that works. Now we should ignore that other error there, by the way. That is a completely different error for a completely different shader for a completely different project. I know this is, that's confusing, but anyway, <laughs> there we go. Now we have red. And actually, you can kind of see it there just a little bit but if I actually raise this up it should become more and more pronounced as it gets near the top and then it turns like teal as we go away and then just completely erases everything because we're we're affecting our alpha channel as well and actually that's a good point this shouldn't modify our color should it it should modify our do a fixed for of our emission. So we're going to actually calculate the emission based on this, not the color, because they, that just makes more sense to me. So we'll set that equal to our emission dot RGB. There we go. And now we should get something slightly different. We're also going to multiply this by, well, we already multiplied by the color, so I don't need that. We're not going to subtract anything from that color anymore, so it's not going to turn teal. And we should now get something hopefully a little bit more vibrant. Yeah. Oh, we're still going, still going teal. Why would that happen? 
Maybe emission can subtract. It doesn't matter. We're going to clamp this. <laughs> so the distance from emission, we want to make that. Is there a clamp? Maybe we'll see. I don't think a clamp zero one is going to exist, but that would normally clamp it between zero and, and one. Uh, but there may be a clamp, which will limit it between a range. There we go. And so this way, if it goes below zero, it just becomes zero. And it's sort of like putting limits on it. It can't go above or below a certain value. So now we don't get that teal anymore and we still get the red. One problem with the red, it's pretty dim. And that's mostly just because we only get to do a, a certain amount of this color. And then it just sort of falls off. Emission really shines through when you can do like HDR stuff because then Bloom can just kind of go crazy on it. So uh, it's been a while since I've done this, but we're going to try it anyway. You should be able to tag a color as HDR which should enable you to go above one like that. So now if you've ever used emission in nor any normal unity shader, it allows, this is going to allow you to go just higher. Uh, so now we have just this red smoke back there and it's all tied to this. So we can kind of move this around and our entire particle cloud is now affected by that red glow, which is kind of, I don't know, I think that's kind of cool. I'll make this, ooh, that's white. Let's make this dark and angry. There we go. So there is some evil smoke, I guess. It takes a little bit for this when I select the particles to actually figure out what's going on. Uh, but there you go. We now have a thing that kind of detects light and kind of gives you sort of that volumetric particle effect without really having to do all the fun uh, volumetric stuff. Just sort of gives you that ambiance. You get, you know, color in your particles. So hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully you guys can use this in your project. If not, <laughs> oops. Uh, but if you guys have suggestions or if, if you do use this, I'd love to see them. Uh, that's how I get my ideas and it's really cool to see what you guys make. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, if there's anything else I'm forgetting, let me know in the comments and I'll do better next time. Uh, but yeah, remember to join our discord channel. That's in the description below. I'll also post this code out on GitHub. There'll be a link in the description so you guys can pick that up and just build from what I have. You don't need to write it all yourself uh, and hopefully it gets maintained a little bit. So. Yeah, but that's pretty much it. We'll probably pick this up and try to actually get this to work with like point lights. I don't imagine that's too hard, but I don't really know. So that's next, but we'll see. If you have other ideas, let me know. I already said that. So I'm going to leave it here. <laughs> till then, till when. Anyway, that's it. Until next time. <laughs> see you, internet.